Philippians chapter 4, and um, I'm just going to be really brief tonight because it's, uh, I don't know where the mic is, but right there. It's open mic night for all you tongue speakers to, to come up and, uh, I'm only playing, I'm only playing. Though I do speak in tongues, I just do it with me and the Lord. But just, we usually do this once, once, uh, once a year. Um, just to give people a chance to give up. I got to stay back here, they told me. Did you hear that? All right. Just to give people a chance to give thanks on, on Thanksgiving um, Eve, so to speak, to give God some glory in your life. But let's go to Philippians 4, and I'll be, uh, uh, like I said, I'll be brief tonight. Let's pray one more time. Father, thank you so much um, for all you do for us, Lord. As we bow our hearts before you this evening, Lord, um, we just pray in Jesus' name that you would fill us with thanks, thankful hearts, Lord. That you would help us to put off the cares of this world, Lord. That you'd forgive us of our sins afresh, because they're many, Lord. And that you'd make us more like your son, Jesus, Lord. Lord, as we move forward uh, through this, this season, this time of year, it's probably the busiest for most of us. But help us, our, our hearts and our minds to be settled on, on you and what you've done for us, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Philippians 4. <clears throat> it's really the epistle of, of joy if you read through Philippians. And remember, Paul, as he writes to the Philippians, remember he's writing from, from prison. He's in a Roman jail, and as he writes to them, he, he kind of encourages them to be of the same mind and be of the same heart. There was a little bit of division in the church amongst some of the prominent women servants in the church, and he writes to them to tell them to be of the same mind, be of the same heart. We're, we're all trying to accomplish the same goals here for Jesus, and you know you're out of the will of God when strife starts stirring up amongst believers. So Paul says... Let that stuff go. Leave it behind and trust in the Lord. And let's pick it up in, I think it's Philippians 4, 6. Yes. Um, we'll just start in verse 1, chapter 4. Therefore, my dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Euodius and beseech Syndicate that you be of the same mind in the Lord. Those were the two women that were kind of at each other. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, this is another servant, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, because the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, it's really the portion of scripture where people turn to for fear and anxiety. Be careful for nothing. Other translations say don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious for anything. Don't worry. Don't be scared. Don't be anxious. Now, that's easier said than done. That's the devil's game. To constantly get us into positions where we get fearful, we get worried, we start to doubt. You, we can get that. That's okay. All right. That's all right. We all love you and forgive you. She's been here for a long time. But... um. Especially during this season, to get us fretting, to get us worried, to get us down, to get us depressed, to get us trying to control things that we cannot control. That's why we need to continually give them to God. And he writes to these two women, and he says, be of the same mind, be of the same heart, rejoice in the Lord. We have a, thought, a lot to be thankful for. We can rejoice. No matter what's going on, we can rejoice. We can be like Job. When everything was lost in one day, we can give God the glory just like Job did. Now he says this, be careful or don't worry about anything. Now people say, well, how do I find that balance, Pastor Matt? 
How does that happen? Does that mean I just sit back and pray all day? And then God's just going to pay my bills? God's just going to like, you know, rain down 50s and 100s from heaven? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go in my yard like the children of Israel got to just go out in their tents in the Exodus and the wilderness wanderings and just pick up manna. We're just going to pick up 50s and 100s in the morning, right? It's just all going to work out. And I'll say, no. If you do that and you just wait like that, you just, then you're just tempting God. You're probably going to be hungry a little bit. But you got to work as if it all depends on you, but you pray and seek the Lord as if it all depends on God. Because what does the Bible say? Both. The Bible says both. If you know in your heart that you're serving the Lord with fervor, that you're doing what you can to take care of your responsibilities for the church, for your home, for your community, if you know that you're doing your part, you know something, you don't have to worry that the Lord's already doing his part. Because he is. He's actually the one giving you the fervor and the ability to do it anyway. So stop worrying, he says, about anything. Don't worry. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, prayer is just general prayer. Supplication is asking God. Asking God. So it says pray and ask. Pray about everything in your life and ask. Ask for wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. I'm always asking God for wisdom. Listen, because when I turn to the pages of Scripture, I, I, God gives me a basic outline and instruction for, for what his will is. And, and the things that are clear, the do's and the don'ts, you know, the way we're not supposed to treat people and the way we're supposed to treat people, he makes that pretty clear. But then for the wisdom on different issues... Lord, you know what? How much do I give of myself to this opportunity? Because I don't want to go overboard. I don't want to run after it too, too much if I'm getting out of your will. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me balance. Let me seek your heart. Lord, how much do I support this? How much do I do that? How much do I get involved in this? Lord, I want to be inside your will. Ask God. Ask, 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 and ask again. You know what? If you seek, knock, and ask... It's a promise. You can claim it. You can put it in the bank. You'll find. That's from him. Now listen. Paul says here, again, I'm only, I'm only going to be about maybe 55 more minutes. Yeah. Can, but um, five more minutes. Because I want to give people a chance to share. But I want you to see the heart's condition as you're seeking, knocking, and asking. As you're going to the Lord in prayer, trying not to worry, trying not to fret about the future, about the past, about what's happening with your body, with your health, with your mind. Trying not to worry, trying not to fret, trying not to be anxious or careful about everything. As you're seeking, knocking, and asking, and, and you're working and you're doing the best you can to take care of your responsibilities, knowing that God's taking care of his. The heart's condition behind your prayers and behind your asking needs to be one of thanksgiving. It needs to be one of thankfulness. Listen. It says, with thanksgiving, thanks, let your requests be made known unto God. How many times do we sometimes seek, knock, and ask, grumbling? Or how many times do we seek, knock, and ask, right? And the little bit of doubt starts to come into my hearts, and then we get into our hearts, and then we get filled with anxiety and anger at the same time. He says, be thankful with thanksgiving. With thanks. When we go to God and we seek, when we knock, when we ask, when we pray, are we thankful? Do we count our blessings first? That's what I try to do. That's what I try to do. When I start getting worried and I start to fret and then I go to the, go to the Lord and I start to pray and I start to go over things with him and I know there's something wrong with my heart, I need to take a step back. The Holy Spirit brings things to my mind and what he usually brings to my mind is, hey, start to count your blessings Start to be thankful for some things. 
And you'll be surprised when you sit there and start to count your blessings that you're, how about that you're, you have life? How about that you have eternal life in Jesus? How about that you have air to breathe, food to eat? If you have a car, thank God. If you have a home, thank God. If you have an apartment, thank God. If you have a TV or two, whatever it is that you have, thank God. Thank God. There's so many things you can thank God for. And then as you start to count your blessings, you can't help but be thankful and you get filled with overflowing love and thankfulness for the Lord. You know what? All the problems that we have that we get careful for or we get anxious about, you know what? They start to fall in line behind all the other blessings that God has already blessed us with. Because what we do is this. We start to worry about the one or two little things that, that aren't happening right now. And we get anxious and we get nervous. So we get like these two ladies in, in the book of Philippians. They were dividing. They were going at one another because things weren't happening in the church the way they thought. Instead of stepping back and counting their blessings and being thankful to God. And some people may say, well, Pastor Matt, you don't know what's happened in my life. How can I be thankful? How can I be thankful? You don't know what's happened with my family. You don't know what's happened with my past. You don't know what's happened with, 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 with my health. You don't know what's going on. And I don't know what's going on. But I do know this, that you can still be thankful. You can because you're here. And if you're here, that means God has a plan and a purpose for you. I don't mean here in the church building. I mean you're here. You exist. And you get to exist because of him. There's something to be thankful for. Well, I'm going through a divorce. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be thankful for anything. I just lost my job. During the Christmas season. How can I be thankful? How can I be thankful? You don't know what happened with my health. Or with my spouse. How can I be thankful? I'm lonely. I'm all alone. How can I be thankful? And they say, you can. You can. Because if you have Jesus in your life. You have everything in your life. And part of the Christian walk, most of the Christian walk, is just realizing that. Realizing that fact. That everything that God has given you, be thankful for. And if God allows all of it to go away, or some of it, or he gives you even more, or he gives a brother ten times more than you have, or whatever, it doesn't matter, because everybody gets Jesus. Jesus. We have the Lord. We have the Lord. I have Jesus in my life. So I can go to God with all the chaos, with everything that's going on in my mind, in my ministry, in my life, in my home, with my family, with my children, with my bills, with all these things. You know what? I can take a step back and breathe and look up to the Lord and I can be thankful because I have a relationship with the living God. With the living God. I can be. Now listen, I say this sometimes and it freaks people out. I say, if God took my wife, I would be okay. If God took my children, I would be okay. I don't want him to do that. And I don't stand up here tempting him to do that. But I would be okay. Because I have Jesus. Jesus. I have the Lord in my life. And you have the Lord. And everything he gives me, a wife and children and blessings and whatever it else, whatever else it is, I have Jesus in my life. And maybe you've been fighting for that marriage. And maybe, and maybe you fought for it and it ended in divorce. And maybe yeah, that spouse is on to somebody else. You can be thankful if you love Jesus because you have Jesus. Because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Listen, he is. This is real stuff. This is reality. This is what freaks people out. When you start to tell people, you know what? I have Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. I have Jesus. Well, say, is Jesus going to pay your bills? Is Jesus going to do that? No, Jesus might not do any of that. But you know what? You have him. 
And I guarantee he'll help you with most of that along the way anyway. And that's why Paul says, don't worry about anything. Listen, that doesn't mean be negligent. That doesn't mean don't take care of your responsibilities. But if those things are coming before your mind all the time and it causes you to fret to the point of worry, anger, or depression, there's a problem. There's a problem. The problem is a relational problem with you and the Lord. That's where the problem is. You know my stupid illustrations. I give them all the time. I tend to freak out. Because things get broken in, in, in my house. My son Luke's monitor, broken. We just, he just had, we just had one a few months ago, broken. And I'm like, what are you talking about? How's this thing broken again? Well, this, and it got moved over there, and blah, 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 blah. And this and that. I'm like, because you just don't care. You just don't care. You don't know what it costs. You don't know what we have to do. You don't know this. And, and, and my wife's looking at me. Stop, it's not a big deal. Blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, because I'm, like, I'm the one that's going to go pay for it. But when you, when you take a step back and you look at Jesus Christ, and if you really believe he is who he says he is, then we don't need to get freaked out. We don't need to fret. We don't need to be anxious and full of anxiety. It debilitates people. It debilitates people. It really does. What we don't have and what we think we should have and the the mental thoughts, the things that go on in my mind, this is what, in our minds, this is what Jesus addressed in the Sermon on the Mount. Did he not? Matthew chapter 6. Remember what he said? He goes off, focuses on the wrong things. As he's talking to God's people, the Jewish people, he's ministering to them. He's preaching to them. He's telling them about characteristics of people of the kingdom, people that know God, people that that have a relationship with God. And, And then he says, you guys are so worried about things you shouldn't be worried about. He goes, look at the birds of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap. They don't gather into barns, but your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not better than birds? The answer is yes, by the way. Don't let anybody tell you you're not because you are. And he says, look at, the, look at the, the hillside. Look at the grass of the field on the hill. Look at the flowers that just grow up from the grass. He goes, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow's cut down, they cut the flowers and the grass down. It looks beautiful. It looks nice. And he goes, isn't God going to take care of you or you of little faith? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. He goes, all those things do the Gentiles seek after. When he's using the word Gentile, Jesus is saying people that don't have a relationship with God. They don't know God. That's why they're so worried about the here and the now so much. But you know God. If you have Jesus, you know Jesus. You know God. You have God. You don't have to get to that point of anxiety, depression, fear. You don't have to get to that place because you can step back and cast all those things on the Lord because he cares for you. All right, let's pray. And then we'll share. Lord, um, we just thank you uh, again for all you are. All you do for us, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit falls, Lord. Lord, even now, I can sense in my spirit in this room, Lord, that your people, some of our people here are just fretting about, you know, what's going on for tomorrow's dinner, what's going on with I have to see my, my in-laws, I got to get this stuff done. Lord, we just want to spend these last moments with you, God, casting our cares upon you, Lord, because you care for us, Lord. Just ask that you'd have your way. You be blessed by our, by our testimonies, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers all the time. In Jesus' name, amen.